Hey everybody, this is Rob, coming to you here uh, in front of Vandalion, and I'm out on some Wyoming State Trust land near the Bighorn River, near where I live. And I'm going to do a little tour of Vandalion. I got two reasons for doing this. Uh, Vandalion's for sale. A number of people are asking for details and videos and pictures of the rust, so this is to show all that stuff. And the second more important reason is I want to memorialize Vandaline a bit. All the little projects I did to it and things like that. So uh, first thing, let's go start with the mileage. So as we go in, <clears throat> mileage as of right now, 129,553 miles. Uh, I bought the van with about 95,000 miles on it, and that was in December 2017. And I've driven this thing everywhere. <laughs> uh, Montana to Florida to Washington State to Texas uh, to New York and this year I put I think over 8,000 miles on it and it has run pretty well uh, since since 2018 it's run pretty well uh, when I had to rebuild the engine And by the way, I got my dogs hanging out for this little tour. There's uh, Dogart, the black one, and Casey, our Griffon. And they both love going on adventures in the van, as does just about everybody. And you're gonna have to apologize for the wind. It's Wyoming, that's our, uh, our main thing around here is wind. Okay, first things first, I wanna start with some of the problem areas on the van before I get into all the good parts. And the main issues with this van are gonna be some cosmetic and some rust. So there's two spots that are not great in terms of corrosion. There's this one, it really hasn't changed since I bought it. can see there's some more corrosion down there and there's our fancy LED headlights that also change color let's head around to the back um, I did well that that sort of yellow off color yellow paint that's a mistake I did that, it's some Rust-Oleum. I, I believe it will buff off. Um, but I wanted to just hit a couple spots of seam rust before I stored it last winter. So the back looks pretty good. Bumper, um, I got minorly rear rear ended. Uh, actually, the day after I bought the van, I've never bothered to bang the bumper out, though I don't believe that would be hard to do. There is a hitch, which the only thing I've used that for is uh, plugging a bike rack into, hauling some mountain bikes around. next spot that is not great is right there okay so this van does need some body work but that's really the, the worst of it um, you have 
some similar issues on the sliding door here. Okay. And uh, overall, the body's in in pretty good shape. You know, if we look under it, it all pretty much looks about like this. Um, Some of those bushings are a bit worn out there, but I've been I've been driving on them no problem. That's probably probably something to fix up for the next owner. So in terms of running, uh, it runs great. I've been doing oil changes uh, between twenty five hundred and three thousand miles, including the oil filter. I've changed the transmission fluid twice, most recently about 5,000 miles ago. And on the last change, there's a little magnet in the transmission that catches the metal filings and there was basically nothing on it. So I believe the transmission's in good shape. Got to change up position. Okay, let's talk about the interior. So let's start up front. Uh, we got a place to put our cell phone. Um, you got your controls, which pretty much don't work. Ventilation fan doesn't work. It's not really a big problem. The heat does work up front. So if I push these two levers over, it gets hot. <clears throat> if I tend to drive it like that, it keeps it cold. Um, we've got fresh air vents for when you're driving. Uh, this early model does not have a tachometer. It's got a clock, which is not nearly as useful. Okay, now we move on to this other dash stuff, which is a customization I did. So, nice Bluetooth stereo. Uh, the stereo will run off both the house battery. So, if I push it that way, it runs off the house battery. It's going to start up here in a second. Starting up. Uh, not quite sure what music's gonna play, but I'll probably find my iPad and play something. Now, if I push the switch this way, it runs off the engine battery, which I almost never do, uh, but it's there just in case you wanna disable the house system for some reason and drive it somewhere, um, you can do that. Now, this switch is for this voltage meter. So if I push it that way, we're reading about 12.17 volts on the house system. Needs to charge up. If I push it that way, we're reading 12.63 volts on the engine battery. Okay, and then we've got two USB ports and a standard 12 volt outlet. And both of those are on this switch. So if you want to use either of those, you turn that on. And that's how that all works. Normal glove box, normal glove box stuff. Okay, let's look at the swivel seat here. This is one of everyone's favorite features. Now you can have three people in here having a nice conversation. Uh, the driver's seat technically also has a swivel on it, but uh, because of another customization I did, that doesn't really work. I'll show you that now. So you can see 
this wooden box here is something I built to house the electrical system. Haven't really seen another van again do it exactly like this. But on the back, we've got 12 volt outlet, USB, and this piece of wood is kind of replaceable. So if you want to move things around or add your own accessories, that's uh, very straightforward to do. Uh, if I did it again, I'd probably move those so that this drawer could open easily with things plugged into it, but it's all a little tricky uh, to, <laughs> to fit it all. Uh, to look in there, let's go ahead and slide the seat. Okay, now this little thing opens and so back here we've got solar charge controller. We'll talk about that in a bit. A uh, whole bunch of fuse boxes or fuses rather. So this runs all the house circuits, um, the fan, the USB chargers, all that stuff. We've got a charger. It charges both the house and uh, engine battery. So you just plug in shore power, starts charging your batteries. Um, we got a couple circuit breakers. This bottom one is the primary circuit breaker. And it, it's mainly for the inverter. And this top one's for all the other house circuits. So just some additional security there. And if I want to disable all the house electronics, I can just pop this circuit breaker by hitting this button. That shuts the battery off, prevents the battery from discharging. So that's a nice thing to do if you're going to be leaving the van for a little bit of time. Okay, and down at the bottom, um, we've got a 100 amp hour lead acid battery, which was pretty hard to fit in. Uh, and that's a big part of the reason for this custom box is to get a nice big lead acid battery in there. And you can see the solenoid, which is really the isolator. This is the Go West E battery isolator kit. Um, so the van did come with that, but I kind of rewired it all in my own way. And that allows this battery to charge while the, the engine's running off the alternator. So there's sort of three ways to charge the house battery. One is by driving the van off the alternator. The other is by plugging into shore power, to charge here. And the third is with the fold out solar panel, which we'll look at in a bit. And that's sort of the, the basis of the house electronic system. Uh, the last bit I'll show you here is this outlet. So if I hit this button, uh, maybe you can see it, I don't know, but a little green light comes on here and tells me that outlet is good to go and it works. Turn it off. Now there's the inverse wired back there and there's also a transfer switch. And what that does is if I plug into shore power, this outlet runs off shore power. And if I'm offshore power, this outlet runs off the inverter, but only if the inverter is turned on. And it's a thousand watt modified wave inverter. So, uh, you know, it's not one of the real expensive ones, but it does everything I need it to do. And it runs my coffee grinder, blender, small tools, um, things like that. Okay, let's look at some of the camper features. So, originally there was a fridge here. And now it's a cabinet. So I took the fridge out. The original fridge is is bad does not really work very well so um, this is just simply a cabinet could be finished a little better you can see there's just kind of a gap at the bottom so I've always wanted to put a piece of trim there just haven't quite got around to it um, I carry some just spare water in there and that oil pan I put that under the sink drain and that's sort of my gray water tank. So when I'm parked and camping, um, I'll put that under the van and that catches what, what falls out of the drain. So a modern van is going to have a gray water tank usually built into the van somewhere, but uh, these, these old Westies do not. 
Um, we got our controls here. So, you know, the battery could use a charge. Uh, the water tank's actually empty right now, but we'll probably put some water in there just to show you how it works. Um, this little light on the bottom, it, it used to indicate that the propane fridge was running, but of course we don't have a propane fridge right now, so that actually does nothing. You got your um, stove controls, we'll look at that in a minute. Silverware drawer. I'll get that all emptied and, and cleaned out. Grab this lighter for the stove. A little kitchen cupboard. Um, in the bottom, I've got a bunch of spare parts. So there's an oil filter for your next oil change. And I think this is a coolant expansion tank. This is a new water filler hose. I've just never got around to installing. Um, speedometer cable a couple other things are in there and <clears throat> this tank is now how the stove runs and so push that off to the side and uh, I can put all kinds of pots and pans in here very convenient you can buy one of these tanks basically any gas station um, okay coming up the stove opens up. So let's light the stove. One, two. Stoves work great. Oh my gosh, really need to clean it. Sorry, guys. Just being real here. <laughs> um, the buyer's gonna get this van nice and clean, but uh, I have been using it. Go ahead and shut that off. Um, here's our sink. A couple sponges, and I keep this little bottle of soap is nice and convenient. Um, so let me show you that the sink works. So I believe right now, no water in the tank okay let's uh let's put some water in the tank and i'll show you how the sink works so you got this nice table great place to work on the computer great place to chop veggies for dinner um great place to eat dinner very nice thing And comes with a Bentley. Now down here is, this is my least favorite way to fill the water tank. The way I like to fill the water tank is using the port outside and a hose uh, that attaches to it, which band comes with that hose. But in a pinch, you can access the water tank here, open the top of it, and pour some water in. All right, we'll just use our big jug here. Pour some water in. Yep, that ought to do it. Close her up. Let's go get the water going. Okay, with some water in the tank. Should be able to do that. And all the water you want. With the tank holds between 10 and 11 gallons, something like that. And you know, my style with the van has been to use something like that for my drinking water and then use that for hand washing, cooking, giving water to the dogs, that kind of thing. Um, but you absolutely can drink straight out of the tank. It's not a big deal. And that is the sink and water. Now, another really cool feature 
um, that I built myself is in this cupboard here. If we go down in there, there's a USB-C charger. And it's actually a USB and USB-C. And I've used this to charge my laptop and my iPad. And what's great about it is you put your, your laptop or iPad in here. You plug it in. You close it up. Okay, now your iPad or laptop is charging and no one can see it, right? So if you want to go into the bar and leave your, your expensive electronics out here to charge, you can absolutely do that and uh, no one will be able to see them from the outside looking in. Uh, this cabinet is just pure standard, just food. Um, I always keep a couple cans of soup just in case I never really eat them. <clears throat> Here's the all important books, my mushroom guide book and my bird guide book because I tend to find myself in places with a lot of good birds and a lot of good mushrooms. Okay, let's look at the closet. So in here is some coat hangers with a little coat rack. You can hang your nice dress shirts. In the bottom, we've got a couple nice things that are going to come with the van. Number one is this. Oh, boy. It's a 120-watt folding solar panel. So we'll look at that in a little bit. Um, next, we've got this bag, and in here is a couple things. There's a hose to fill the water tank from the outside. There's an extension cord so you can plug into shore power. And little adapters for the hose and things like that. And then what's really nice is you've got a cover. So this is the cover that I bought off Go Westy, and it's how I've stored the van in win and it's how I've stored the van in the winter. And it was a rather pricey cover, so it's in great shape. That's going to come with the van. Let's take a look at the bed or seat. Um, it's got one seat belt in the back here, and it's got the bolts for another seat belt there. But that seat belt was in bad shape, so I just took it out. But I think you can easily buy another seat belt. Now, to get the bed out, you kind of have to have this table tucked back. Now, if we pop this little lever, it opens up. Big storage compartment. Uh, it did have a heater that came out here and then uh, ran off, you know, the engine coolant heater, original. But that heater started leaking. It was leaking coolant, so I removed it and uh, just put the coolant hoses together so that made the system a little more simple, a little less to break. Uh, sometimes I do miss that heater. Uh, bear with me. Uh, you can prop that thing up now. I do carry a Mr. Buddy heater for camping, which I don't use all that often, but it's nice to have when I do want it. Um, this box down here, it's got a bunch of spare parts. Extra alternator belt, um, distributor cap, fuel pump, fuses. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Spark plugs, spark plug wires. Um, all brand new. All just waiting for someone to need them. And in this box, I, I carry a lot of tools. So I won't show you that now, but I do have a nice aftermarket jack. Uh, so you got everything you need to do a spare tire change if you get a flat tire. The original jacks on these vehicles were terrible and dangerous, so I've got a nice aftermarket one. Got this uh, thing for getting your lug nuts and lug bolts off. 
Um, yes, the front and rear do take two different sizes, I believe 17 and 19 millimeter, which is a little annoying. So you need something like that. Okay, let's make the bed. It's a two-handed operation. Kind of put the seat belt down, put this lever up, pull, push the cushion back. Voila. Pretty comfy bed. Uh, this fabric is all original and so is the foam in it so uh 40 year old fabric and foam um, i've slept on it it's not too bad okay another unique thing about vandalion is this headbanger cabinet which i custom made so we've got two six by nine speakers which um will blast the beats as loud as you want and Lots of storage in there. And underneath it, we've got kind of this cool mandala thing happening. So that's really nice to look at as you're falling asleep, in my opinion. Now, the reason for having a custom headbanger cabinet is when I got it, there was an air conditioner, I think evaporator up in the original. And the air conditioner compressor was completely seized up, uh, completely insalvageable. So I pulled out the entire air conditioning system, which was about 100 pounds worth of weight, just gone out of the vehicle, um, and added this custom cabinet for storage. And it's also a little bit slimmer than the original which means when you're driving down the road, you can see further behind through the rear view mirror because the, the old one hung down in a way where it made it hard to see. So that's that part. Now looking up in the pop top roof is another customization, which is a fantastic fan. If I were gonna do it again today, I would use the Max Air brand fan. I have in my new van it is quite a bit quieter, but uh, the good news is these are this is a standard dimension 14 by 14. So someone could put a Max Air fan in here very easily. And to show you that working, first you twist this, which pops it up, and you hit this knob. You've got three speeds. All right, let's look at the pop top. Uh, you're probably not gonna be able to hear me talking as I do it, because I'm over there, but uh, here we go. Just come in the van, grab the handle, hit the light, push, push up. Gas struts lift it up for you, push this forward. This is a new tent. The tent it came with was ripped in a few places and it didn't have side windows. This tent is in perfect condition. It's got great side windows. And you can, you can pop those down and have sort of bug-free ventilation. Uh, those gas struts are really nice. And by the way, these are mounts for Yakima roof racks, which do not come with the van, but I've had them up there. If you have like a canoe on the roof, uh, those gas struts are really actually essential uh, for popping the top with some weight on the roof. Hinges are in very good condition. Let's look at the back. So in the back, we've got this little cabinet. Good place to put some clothes. And these are curtains. So this one goes all the way around the front window and it's got these little snaps and there's, there's places they snap in up front. So this will give you privacy through the front and driver side, passenger side window. 
And then this little one covers the window on the sliding door. So all the curtains throughout the van are in pretty good shape. Uh, we're kind of missing the little, the little grabber on this one. But you can close all the curtains and have basically perfect privacy throughout the van. And yep, the, the wall stuff, wallpaper, I guess, came off there. So that's something for the next owner to, to fix if they so choose. Now to open the trunk, I shouldn't say trunk, to open the engine compartment. Pop that. We've got a couple nice things in here. So number one is on the trunk lid. We got a blaze cut fire extinguisher. Okay. Uh, one of the main problems with Vanigans is they catch fire. Now the reason these vans tend to catch fire is because the fuel system was not designed to handle ethanol gas. Uh, so if you're buying a van again, make sure it has an updated fuel system and that all the fuel lines have been changed out from the original. Looking into this one, yep, it's dusty. I drive on a lot of dirt roads. Doesn't hurt it. These fuel rails, all new. Fuel system, all new. Fuel pump, I've changed it. Um, so this engine's good to go. And that's what the fuel compartment looks like. Alternator is actually upgraded and upsized. Um, that was done by the previous owner, but it's never given me any trouble. Puts out plenty of power. Charges both batteries, no problem. Okay, now in these vans, to check the oil and coolant, you come back here. Uh, coolant's looking good. Coolant condition, good. I did a coolant flush. Oh, when did I do that? Maybe a year and a half ago and got all kinds of dirty coolant out of there, put nice clean coolant in. Oil's been changed 300 miles ago. So a little hard to see the oil on the dipstick because it's clean, but right in the middle of the level. Put that back. I just love how you have to pop open the license plate to do that. Also from the back with the lift gate open, you can access this headbanger cabinet. Um, get things out of there. That's where I like to keep my Frisbee. Look at the tailpipe. One problem you have on Vanigans is the exhaust system rusts out, corrodes out. This one's on its way to doing that, but uh, it's totally fine condition. This oxygen sensor is new as of, I think, a thousand miles ago. Um, so that's good to go. You need to change those out about every 15,000 miles. They're about 30 bucks. Not a big deal. And that's what that is. Does need a little piece of insulation there. Not sure where that went, but uh, I'll fix that. Uh, the tires are Nokian Rotiva All Terrain. Very nice tires, lots of wear left on the rear, even more wear left on the front. Actually, these could use a rotation, put the back on the front, vice versa. Uh, the front of these vehicles is much lighter than the back. And so you do get uneven wear on the tires from the rear to the front. So probably about due up to rotate these tires. But these tires will take you anywhere you want to go in the country. Now for a spare tire, uh, we've got the original clamshell. And it's got a new spare tire on it. I have used the spare tire once. Before I got the current set of tires, I got a flat tire, so spare tire is good.
good to go, 100%. And they'll give you all the tools you need to get this clamshell open, get the tire out, get it fitted out. I think you never want to go down the road without the ability to change a spare tire. And we'll do a walk around and I'll just talk about this, this van a little bit. I've met different kind of people in the Vanagon community. So some people really like things all original. They really like things clean and polished. They like nice paint. And I like all that stuff too, but I like going on adventures. So the other kind of person I met on the in the Vanagon community, community is the person out there doing stuff with their van, you know, going up dirt roads, going into BLM land, finding the hidden campsite. And I've done lots of that. Driven through snow, mud, uh, driven over mountain passes. And it's been an absolute blast. So if you are the type of Vanagon owner who wants all original, who wants everything really clean and uh, updated and as good as possible, then this probably isn't the van for you. To drive around and, and do adventures and little improvements and projects well this is 100 the van for you keep talking about this fold up solar panel so let's show you how that works so first i want to show you the voltage on the house battery before i put the panel on it, it says 12.09 volts so that's actually not very good uh, we'd like to charge that up a bit more so let's go put the solar panel out and we'll see that change. All right, so I'm gonna put the solar panel out. Dogar's gonna help. All right, it goes this way. Hold it out like that, facing the sun, of course. It's got some little legs that pop out. useless so the idea of the city water port is if you had a campground with a water hookup you could just plumb your water right in here to the sink um, to me that's not as useful as the just using a water tank basically um, I'm almost never at a campground that's the shore power where you can plug in an extension cord this is where you can fill the water tank I've got the adapter coming with it uh, to connect to that standard RV water adapter but with the solar panel plugged in facing the Sun okay now mind you the sun's behind a cloud so we're not gonna get that much power out of it but if we come back and look at our voltage it's at 12.59 so solar panels giving us some charge on a bright July day in direct sun, uh, you're gonna be looking at like 14 volts here. It's gonna be charging about eight amps. That battery at about eight amps, which is pretty decent. That is the solar charge controller. If you wanted, you could put a permanent solar panel on the roof and the wiring is, is ready to go on that. Um, it's just a matter of really just mounting the solar panel and figuring out how to run the wire so that the pop top still works. Uh, the reason I never put a permanent solar panel on the roof is I like parking in the shade. And then I put the solar panel in the sun and that's how I like to do it. Uh, but I think a permanent solar panel would be a nice addition. Yeah. The other thing I'll note is uh, 
This was where the propane fridge vented from, but it's been totally sealed off. I just keep it here for that original look, um, but that does absolutely nothing. Now, one thing I haven't shown yet is just the upstairs. Upstairs is more or less all original. Now, back here, I've got a little rug that I roll out. It's coming with the van. It's a fun little thing. This is great as a shelf, so if I'm like down here cooking, I can put stuff up here and uh, keep it out of the way. But to turn this into a bed, you just grab back here, kind of shimmy it out, flip it over, and you've got another bed. So you can sleep four people in here. It has been done. It's a little tight but there's very few vans that can match that capability, honestly. And then it just flips back and you got all this nice headroom. So when you're washing dishes and things like that, uh, you're standing up straight. And I really like that. We've also got this little gutter here um, for keeping stuff like bear spray and hatchets, knives, flashlights, you know. What do you like? <laughs> you put it here. All right, so I think that is most of the details on Vandalion. So only thing left to do is go do a little drive-in. All right, let's start her up and go for a little drive. Neutral, clutch in. Starts right up every time. Parking brake down. First gear. Get a little squeak off the alternator belt. Just needs a little adjustment. People drive all day long. Windows are hand cranked. And my kid loved to say, Cruising down the road in a van lion, you really feel how the road connects with your soul. And I don't know what that means exactly, but that's what he says. So we're cruising. Mountain. Dirt roads all day long. some thoughts about about driving bandigans all right and, and especially vandaline and those thoughts go approximately something like this uh, i don't like going much over 60 mile an hour and definitely not over 65 you know things just start to feel a little squirrely at those speeds and for that reason i don't really like to drive it on the interstate I will drive it on the interstate if I have to. It will do it. it. Tends to annoy some of the other people on the road. But there are lots of sections of interstate that are relatively uh, uncrowded. And so that's not a problem at all. But to me, a van like this is made for going down the two lane highways, maybe the four lane state highways, county highways. Um, out here in the west, there's plenty of terrain like that. If you go to the east, it's a little harder to find those kind of roads. So in the east, you're kind of stuck going down the interstate. So in my mind, this is a vehicle for the western US um, and just other unpopulated areas with big, long, straight roads fantastic in that kind of land it's great for going down dirt roads but i will say it it's noisy right you hear the road you feel the road it's up in your in your business um and there's just there's no avoiding that so that's kind of how it works um and, and there's just not not a whole lot of ways to get away from that 
So take those words for what it's worth. The other thing I'll say is that in this here uh, manual shift, downshifting is an important skill. All right, so the brakes work good, but they're not anti-lock brakes and they're not the brakes of a modern vehicle. Uh, so, so it's important to drive this van correctly, you know, downshift it um, and, and don't push the speed too much and, and you'll be just fine. All right, if you try and drive this thing like your Dale Earnhardt Jr., uh, you're gonna have a bad time. That's the nature of the van again. All right, that's what I got to say about that.